All right, hey everyone. Uh, I'm Andy Zhang, and just like the last speaker, I'm from Princeton University. Uh, and today I'm going to pre be presenting 3D Match, learning local geometric descriptors from RGBD reconstructions. Uh, this is a joint work with Shuan Song, Matthias Niesner, Matthew Fisher, Jenshun Xiao, and Thomas von Kauser. So our work here focuses on the task of matching features in 3D data with local 3D descriptors. So for example, suppose that you took a 3D camera and scanned the iconic Stanford bunny from a certain viewpoint, and you captured another 3D scan of the bunny from a different viewpoint. The goal of a local 3D descriptor is to encode the 3D shape within a local region and map it into a descriptor vector of values. The descriptor itself should be repetitive enough so that it can match to similar local regions in the second scan, and it should also be discriminative enough so that it can match to each other uniquely without any false positives. So with a good descriptor, you would then be able to match the local geometric features between the scanned surfaces in order to establish point-to-point -point correspondences, uh, which you can then use to bring the two surfaces into alignment. So as many of you know, this task has been around in computer vision and graphics for ages. And with the recent rise of commodity depth cameras, this task is becoming more and more relevant in today's technologies. So some applications of matching 3D features include scan registration and loop closures for 3D reconstruction, uh, model registration for pose estimation, as well as 3D mesh correspondence. However, matching local features in real-world 3D scans still remains a hard problem, and for several reasons. First, the surfaces captured from 3D scanners are always partial and incomplete due to camera viewpoint differences and occlusions. Uh, secondly, sensor limitations make 3D scans very noisy and with different noise patterns between different sensors and data sets. Uh, third, you also have point density changes. A uh, surface of a table that is scanned closer to a camera will have a denser 3D point cloud than a surface of a table scanned farther away from the camera. Uh, and finally, uh, real-world 3D scans are full of anomalies. For example, many indoor surfaces that are just slightly reflective will sometimes suffer from depth uh, missing depth data, such as the top of this coffee table. All of these things contribute to the reason why matching features is so hard on real-world 3D data. And yet, in response to these challenges, previous local 3D descriptors typically only address part of the problem. So for example, fast point feature histograms are robust to some sensor noise and point density changes, but tend to break down due to severe cases of partial surfaces and occlusion. On the other hand, spin images were created to address the problem of partial surfaces, but in practice, they don't really fare too well with noisy point clouds or density changes. Uh, overall, the main problem is that many of these handcrafted descriptors were specifically designed to, to handle only one or two parts of the problem that the authors had in mind, rather than considering all of the other possible issues that you would typically find in real 3D scans. So in the face of these drawbacks, the goal of our paper is to train one of the first data-driven local 3D descriptors. Uh, the idea is that by learning from example correspondences on real 3D data, we can train a descriptor to address not one, but all of the aforementioned challenges. So to this end, we present 3D Match, a data-driven local 3D descriptor using a 3D component. Uh, given an interest point on a 3D surface, we take the local volumetric region around the point and convert it into a 3D voxel grid representation called TDF, where the value of every voxel represents its distance to the nearest surface. Uh, we refer to this small voxel volume as the interest point's local 3D patch, and it is oriented with respect to the camera's coordinate axes. Uh, we feed this volume into 3D Match in order to compute a feature descriptor vector for that point. And the more similar two uh, descriptor vectors are, uh, the more likely there exists a correspondence between the two points. Here's the architecture behind 3D Match, uh, where to convert a 3D patch to a descriptor, you do a single forward pass of the 3D convolutional network. And the features of the last layer, colored in orange here, serve as the feature descriptors for the input patches. We can train two towers of the network sharing weights in a Siamese fashion using pairs of matching and non-matching local 3D patches. The contrastive L2 loss layer here at the top of the network, colored in purple, uh, effectively pushes together the descriptors of matches and pulls apart non-matches in Euclidean distance space. Overall, the architecture for 3D match is pretty straightforward. Uh, however, one of the hardest challenges in making 3D match work is the question, how do we get the training data? Uh, in our case, training data comes in the form of ground truth correspondence labels between 3D scans and point clouds. So one possible way to obtain them is with human effort and manually label the correspondences. However, doing this manually on 3D point clouds is extremely challenging. 
And this is because all of the difficulties that I mentioned earlier about why this task is hard for algorithms are also part of what makes it really difficult for even humans to label the correspondences on the 3D data. You can imagine that trying to click on point-to-point -point correspondences between noisy 3D point clouds with missing regions of data and density changes, it's a complete nightmare. So as a result, this process is not only hard and time consuming, but also prone to errors, making it not a scalable solution. So then, is there a way to obtain training data automatically? Our answer is yes. And to this end, we present the key idea of our paper. We propose to leverage RGBD reconstructions to obtain 3D scans and free correspondence labels that we can use for self-supervised training. So to elaborate, suppose that we pick a random surface point on a depth scan from a completed reconstruction, in this case, a corner of a chair. Uh, on the right, we see a top-down view of the scan. Estimated camera poses from the reconstruction algorithms enable us to find other RGBD frames that view the same corner of the chair from other scanning angles. In this way, we can obtain a correspondence label between two very different views of the same 3D point. Normally, a long-range correspondence like this will be pretty expensive to obtain, whether it is by human annotation or by building a physical rig. But the beauty of reconstructions is that you can aggregate short-range correspondences from frames captured side by side, and over time in the scanning sequence, this will result in long-range correspondences such as this one. And in fact, we can find millions of these kind of correspondences in RGBD reconstructions, and by extracting the local volumetric patches around these interest points, we will have obtained precisely the kind of training data that we need to train 3D Match. So to show this concept in action, we make use of over 50 different RGBD reconstructions and automatically generate over 8 million correspondences as well as their local 3D patches to self-supervise our 3D Match component. We then evaluate 3D Match and demonstrate its flexibility by using it in three very different applications. For the first application, we show that 3D Match can be used to improve future reconstruction algorithms by robustly matching local 3D features on the noisy depth scans of scenes that the model has never seen before. So for example, by combining 3D Match with RANSAC, we can perform geometric registration to successfully align 3D scans and detect challenging cases of loop closures in scanning sequences. Here we show some more examples where the alignment produced by 3D Match with RANSAC is better than other geometric registration algorithms on matching 3D scans of indoor scenes. In our experiments, we further show that 3D Match is not only better than other local 3D descriptors, but also, when combined with RANSAC, is better than many other global geometric registration algorithms on standard benchmarks. In the end, just by using the correspondences from 3D Match on depth data with the simple bundle adjustment pipeline, we can produce globally consistent 3D reconstruction results. And if we took the state-of-the-art geometry-based reconstruction algorithm and replaced their matching function with 3D Match, we can also significantly reduce the error of reconstruction on standard benchmarks. But of course, this task is also the most direct application of 3D Match, and as you can imagine, the generalization requirement for this task is relatively low. Therefore, to show that 3D Match is flexible enough to do more, uh, we show that in the second application, 3D Match can also be used to perform 60 object pose estimation. So we do this over an Amazon Picking Challenge data set, featuring RGBD scans of shelves and red bins full of household objects arranged in an unstructured way. And the goal is to use our 3D match descriptor to find key point correspondences between a pre-scanned object model and a 3D scan of the shelf where the object is placed, and align the object model to the scan in order to estimate its 60 pose in the shelf. This task is different from reconstruction in the sense that we are now aligning full 3D models to partial scans instead of partial to partial scans. Additionally, the scale of the geometric features is much smaller for this task. So to make 3D match work, we reduce the size of the local patches in 3D space. But in the face of these differences in data type, 3D Match is still able to outperform other local descriptors as well as the best performing algorithms on the data set in terms of accuracy of predicted poses. Uh, on the right hand side, we show a collage of images showing uh, oriented bounding box of predictions using 3D Match. Finally, in the third application, we use 3D Match to find correspondences between full 3D model meshes. The style of the data here is quite different from what 3D Match was originally trained on. So the goal of this application is to test whether or not 3D Match is actually flexible enough to be used as a general purpose 3D local shape descriptor. And interestingly enough, without any fine tuning, we found that 3D Match is still able to find geometrically similar points on the 3D meshes. 
So for example, on these uh, models, the red points on bicycle seats match to other bicycle seats, and the blue points on chair feet match to, match to other similar chair feet. And here's another example using different types of objects. 3D Match is able to uh, match the handle of a wagon to other handles of other objects because of their geometric similarity, uh, which is really cool. Uh, so to conclude this presentation, here are a few takeaways. Uh, in the summary of our work, we have presented 3D Match, a data-driven local 3D descriptor for matching features in real-world scanning data. Uh, 3D Match is the first of its kind, and this was made possible by using RGBD reconstructions as training data, which provide millions of freely obtained correspondence labels in order to associate densely scanned surfaces to each other. So with the creation of 3D Match, we hope to encourage you all to think about potential ways in which you could also make use of correspondences from reconstructions as training data for your own deep models. And finally, as part of our contribution, we also uh, uh, provide all of the code and data in this web link below. Uh, please come to our poster session, and thank you all for listening. Hi. Uh, so when you created your uh, training data, you were using 3D reconstructions which had many, many views combined together. Yes. But when you want to recognize a scene, typically you have a single view or a couple of views. So you may not have full volume occupancy for the, for the online data. So how does your network generalize mm -hmm. with missing data in that particular case? So in the reconstructions and the training data, we actually use only single frame uh, depth scans in order to, and we use the, the 3D data inside that single frame depth scan as our training data. So when we're using, for example, trying to compare a, a two point uh, or a, a correspondence, um, we're only using the, the two frames of the, the two different views that, from which it was captured uh, as training data. So during test time, we only have the individual scan and that's enough for 3D match to work on. Okay, next. Yeah. Um, did you do any systematic study of the mathematical invariance properties of your 3D descriptors with respect to uh, transformations of the input? Um, a lot of these experiments were more empirical than, than math, uh, like proof. We, we didn't have any proofs in, in, the, in the paper to, to prove that this was the best uh, solution. Uh, most of this was more empirical, so that's why we took sort of an application-based approach to evaluate uh, the, use, the usefulness of 3D Match. I was wondering, uh, the input to your network are these local, uh, um, you know, cubes. How did you, uh, what, how did you find, how did you select the scale and orientation of these cubes? Mm -hmm. So in our paper, we kept them at a, at a fixed size depending on the application that we were doing it for. So if we were doing indoor reconstructions, uh, we found that uh, 30 centimeters as a local region size was enough for us in our purpose. Uh, we didn't do any extensive studies on how the scale influences the performance, but that's definitely something that we want to explore in the future. So then a follow-up question is for the mesh correspondence. It, you showed yep. an example where the models were already um, aligned in a in the their yeah. coordinate frames were aligned. Mm -hmm. Did you do any experiments where they were not aligned? So um, for, for the mesh correspondences, we didn't do any experiments whether or not they were, uh, when, when they were not aligned. But actually an interesting thing to note is that uh, when we were doing mesh correspondences, if I can go back to the slide. Oh, sorry. So um, the, the mesh correspondences example, the voxel volumes were indeed uh, computed with respect to the same uh, object coordinates. But um, the interesting thing is that you can notice if we have the blue point on the edge of the bicycle, that matches to uh, the edges of the wheels for all other bicycles, mm -hmm. even though the voxel volumes were oriented in the same direction. So this tells us that 3D Match was learning some degree of rotation invariance, which is something very interesting to see. And probably if we tried to uh, mix the, the, the object orientations, uh, that would be a similar observation that we would see, is that 3D Match learns rotation invariance. Thanks. I'm sorry, in the interest of time, I think we have to move on to the next paper. Okay and uh, encourage you to come to the podium. <laughs>